it's important to be able to read and understand a wiring diagram. Multimeter comes in handy in a multitude of ways. Checking voltage is an important part of troubleshooting and doing wiring. Another important part is being able to check continuity or making sure that a wire is complete all the way through the harness. So you're checking both ends of a wire to make sure there is no broken connection or that is indeed the wire that you expect it to be. We'll get into why this wire is important a little bit later. label maker I can't stress enough how nice these labels are they're very good for identifying your wires they're great for troubleshooting later nothing like having a legible wire to tell you exactly what it's for. This is a sample wire, but you can actually run the check engine light. Nice tools make for a nice job. There are other ECUs. I've only run this one. This connector will be important later. We'll get into that connector later as well. This connector is unimportant. Both of these connectors are going to be used later as well. And now we carry on to the systems. Here we have the pressure regulator solenoid. This controls vacuum at startup. Your swirl valve control for the EGR. Oxygen sensor. Fuel injector number four. AAC solenoid, this is your idle air control. FICD solenoid, this is your fast idle control device. Fuel injector number three. This is the air regulator solenoid. This is the on-off valve for your FICD. Fuel injectors number one and two. Grounds are very important. The KAECU uses them for switching. Distributor crank angle sensor. This wire is not necessarily needed. ECU temp sensor. EGR solenoid. Throttle valve switch. Throttle position sensor. airflow or MAF and your air temp sensor. Finally we get to the ignition components, your coil ground, coil connector, 
and the connector for your power transistor. And so ends the tour of the KA24E engine management system. If you didn't now a closer look at the ECU and connector. The numbers on the left are representative of the pin count across the connector. Uh, each block has either eight, seven, eight, or nine rows of pins. This will help you keep orientation of where you're at on the connector as you go through this diagram, which also shows the same 8789 configuration for the pin layout, as well as the pin numbers and wire colors and what they do. I've highlighted in pink wires you will need to address, as well as the grounds. This diagram is showing how to wire in those wires to a relay system or a k and box system, which we'll get into in a bit. Here we can see the wires needed at this fuse box connector. They will be connected as shown in the previous diagram, as well as this fuse box connector. Uh, you can see the brown AAC valve wire that we tested earlier to make sure it had continuity. This is the chassis connector to gauges. There's quite a few wires here that could interest you if you decided. There is the orange starter wire, obviously, and there is also the check engine light, but there are also consult wires here, as well as other wires that you could run to the gauge. While researching for this video, I found that Wiring Specialties offers factory Nissan connectors, some of which are the male chassis connector and male fuse box connectors that will be nice to use and keep you from cutting your harness. This allows you to basically plug in a pigtail and wire directly to your wiring method of choice, whether that's the relay system or the Can-Am box. You can see it even has matching wires for the orange start and the check engine light ground switch power. A few shots of the Can-Am box and how it is wired up makes this a very simple job. And then a few items with the stock 620 systems. This diagram shows how to use the black wire with white stripe from the positive side of your coil and it should be used to run your switch power and you should cap off that black with red wire. It runs to your ignition switch and is no longer used. This diagram explains how to bypass the voltage regulator which is no longer needed with the KA alternator and how the KA alternator should be wired into the 620 system. A good final check is to be sure that your charge light is on when the ignition switch is also on. This final diagram shows how to hook up the starter and temperature sensor as well as your oil pressure switch to the 620 system and this will allow your th temperature switch to work as well as your oil pressure light when the key is on. At this point you have successfully wired your KA24E into your Datsun 620 truck. Any questions, post them down below. Thanks.